just like Gopal Kumar, uh, even in Ramaloka, even in Dwarka, Gopal Kumar is not happy. So finally, Gopal Kumar, just to finish that story, Gopal Kumar is taken to Vrindavan. And it's like they, the, this airplane takes him from one part of uh, Goloka, the Dvarka part, to the Vrindavan part. So there he is in the forest, and he's like looking around, where am I, well, you know? And one of the cowherd boys suddenly comes in the forest, Gopal Kumar, Gopal Kumar, where are you? Where have you been? Krishna wants you right away, come on. And he grabs them, and they start running through the forest. And then they, they come to this clearing in the forest, and there's all these cows standing around, and uh, there's all these cowherd boys, you know, they're like around in a circle. And Krishna is in the middle, right, on the ground going, I want my Gopakumar. <laughs> Where's my Gopakumar? <laughs> right? And so the cowherd boy brings Gopakumar and says, Krishna, Here's Gopakumar right here. He just got lost in the woods a little bit. Oh, Krishna like gets up and he embraces Gopakumar like this and they're both crying and oh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful scene. Ah. So this is Krishna. Krishna always wants to go back to Vrindavan. And anytime he get, even gets reminded about Vrindavan, then he kind of gets, he goes into a funk, you know? It's like... He doesn't want to go, he doesn't want to do all this king stuff. It's like so foreign from his real nature. Uh, his real nature is a cowherd boy. So, Lord Jagannath, the whole mystery of Lord Jagannath is that he's like Krishna in Dvorka, all this opulence, royal paraphernalia and all this stuff. So once a year, he and Balaram and Subhadra Subhadra, by the way, of course, is the same yoga maya who took birth in Vrindavan and was exchanged for Krishna. So the three of them get on their chariots and they go back to Vrindavan. And uh, of course, you know, the Lord feigns, he says, uh, oh, I have some illness and there's the only medicine that'll work is in Vrindavan, so I have to go, which is, which is true, but it's illness of the heart, right? Is, he's lonely. He wants the company of the associates, uh, of his eternal associates in Vrindavan. So they sneak off and they go to Vrindavan. And of course, the goddess of fortune is, is not very happy about that. <laughs> so after a couple of weeks, she goes and chases him. And uh, then there's this big confrontation between the goddess of fortune and her, and her troops and the cowherd boys. And she's like, you have to return my Krishna right away. And then, uh, then you know, after a little bit, Krishna comes back. So that's the, that's the Ratyatra. That's the meaning of the Ratyatra. Uh, so uh, Krishna is always in Vrindavan. He actually never leaves Vrindavan. When, when he apparently leaves Vrindavan, he actually transforms from the Krishna or Govinda form to the Vasudeva form. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. See, so when we chant that mantra, we're worshiping Krishna in the mood of opulence, in Dvarka. See, in Dvarka, Krishna has to deal with all these different types of people, and some of them may not be pure devotees and, and so on like that. They may have some motivations and and like that. So Krishna is like more tolerant in a sense in, in Dwarka Leela uh, because of being a king he has to deal with a wide variety of people but in Vrindavan Krishna is among his intimate associates and he doesn't want anyone to disturb that mood. See? So that's why when, when Krishna apparently leaves Vrindavan he enters within their hearts and he enjoys their company in the intimate relationship within their hearts. You see? Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. He's always with his Vrindavan associates, his eternal associates. You see? So when Krishna appears, he uh, apparently appears as the son of Vasudeva. 
But then he immediately is transferred to Vrindavan. He set up the situation deliberately so that he would have to immediately go to Vrindavan on the plea of protecting him from Kangsa. See, when Krishna, make, he, he makes these pastimes so that um, the confidentiality of his intimate pastimes is protected. See, if the child has to be protected from the Kangsa, this murderer, mad, you know, madman, um, then the whole thing has to be very secret. Huh? Nobody knows where Krishna is and nobody's saying anything. It's all very confidential. So that means all those pastimes are considered confidential. Nobody's supposed to know about them except the people who are directly involved. That's because most people wouldn't understand. Huh? Most people wouldn't understand uh, what really goes on between Krishna and his intimate associates. Because most people, their idea is, I want to benefit myself. I want to satisfy my desires. But in Vrindavan, the specific uh, quality that the residents of Vrindavan have is that they love Krishna so much that their prime concern is how to please Krishna, not how to please themselves, not how to benefit themselves but how to satisfy Krishna's desires. This is the specific quality of the residents of Vrindavan that sets them apart from all other devotees. Now, their love is completely pure. They have absolutely no selfish desire whatsoever. And of course, the situation there is such that they don't need to have, huh? because the cows provide so much wealth Everybody has the necessities of life in superabundance. They don't need to worry about anything. You know, actually, they're protected by the cows. So, of course, these are all lessons for all of us. That cows are the real wealth. If you want to have wealth, if you want to be happy, if you want to be rich in this world, then have cows. Because cows give all of the ingredients necessary for Vedic sacrifice. Without cows, you can't perform Vedic sacrifice. And we'll see tomorrow how we uh, will do it Abhishek with uh, so many different ingredients from the cows. Milk and yogurt and cream and like that. Uh, so uh, in the temples in India, the cow is so important that the temples are cleaned with cow dung. Uh, the deities actually bathed in cow urine and cow dung. So just imagine how important the cow is in Vedic society. Uh, the cow is completely pure. And everything about the cow, even the urine and stool of the cow is pure. And it's used as a medicine in Ayurvedic medicine. And it's also used in all kinds of spiritual and religious functions and, and uh, the ghee from the butter of the cow is used for sacrifices. And if you know how to do these sacrifices, you can produce rain very easily. Uh, simply by chanting the holy name, doing a little homa and yajna, uh, you can pr very easily produce rain. Now, people don't know these things. But when the, when the fat of the, the, see the ghee, the, the molecules of fat in the ghee are exactly the right size, for example, for the generation of nerve and brain tissue. And so when people eat ghee and milk products, this helps the development of their brain and intelligence. And we see that people who, who eat a lot of milk products are very intelligent automatically. And also when the, when the ghee is burned in the sacrificial fire, the ash that's created is uh, sticky. Uh, you'll, you'll see if you have fire cer ceremony under a, 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 a low roof, under a low ceiling, uh, the, the smoke will go up and it will stick to the, to the ceiling. Uh, of course, in a place like this, there's enough room that it'll go all over the place. But, but still, it's very, very tiny. If you look at it under a microscope, it's really, really small little pieces of ash, but they're like sticky. So what happens is 
these these go high up in the sky and they and the rain actually will condense around them it's like like cloud seeding huh? except it's done from the ground you don't need airplanes and all that huh? much cheaper <laughs> no jet fuel required so the Vedic technology is like is very very advanced try to understand a good comparison would be in philosophy that Western knowledge uh, only in the last let's say hundred and hundred years or so has Western knowledge come to the point where it can begin to grasp the most fundamental issues of Vedic philosophy uh, Einstein was very clever Einstein realized the absolute nature of consciousness 